Well, the RP Sanjeev Goenka group has been synonymous with Kolkata and West Bengal given its two-century history in the state and it's got its presence across all industries right from power, chemicals, IT to consumer. But what about the way forward and the vision for the group? That's something we'll discuss with Mr. Shashwat Goenka, the vice chairman of the RPSG group. Hi Shashwa, thanks so much Hi. for making time and speaking with ET now. Pleasure being here, it's a very very impressive building I should say. <laughs> but you know, we, we on this ET now go journey, we have been talking about Kolkata and West Bengal. The RPSG group of course has been calling it home for what, over two centuries now? Yeah, absolutely. How has been the pace of development in West Bengal and Kolkata over the last few years you believe? So I think uh, over the last few years, a lot has changed in the city and I don't know when was the last time you came here. Uh, but if you actually just drive around, you will see the amount of infrastructure development that's taken place. And, and I think what's also changed over the last two years is um, a lot of people are now moving back uh, to West Bengal. People originally who were from here who had moved out, a lot of them are moving back. So I think that's a reflection of the transformation that we've seen in the state. And I think they're coming back because companies like yourself have been providing that opportunity as well, right, to the talent because at one point of time there was that offshoring that was happening of talent. But within the group itself, Shashwa, there's this uh, reinvigorated kind of energy which has come back because you're talking about making your revenues 2x in a matter of four years, profitability going by around 2.5x. What do you think will drive the growth? So I think for us, across all sectors that the group is involved in, you're going to be seeing a lot of transformation and a lot of growth. So right from whether it's the energy business to whether it's the manufacturing business of carbon black, which is now diversifying into chemicals, whether it's the retail business, whether it's the consumer business, uh, whether it's the media or the entertainment business. So, you know, across all verticals and even the BPO business, so they're all going to go through a lot of transformation, a lot of growth, organic and inorganic over the next couple of years. And try and get some glean into that, uh, you know, transformation over the course of the conversation. But let me start with something which is very close to your heart. That's the retail business, the Spencer's retail, right? You've been working a lot towards that in terms of improving the profitability, turning around and also improving the SSSG. Tell me the roadmap for that. When do you see that happening? Sure. So I think if you look at the business, um, it had reached an uh, extremely positive state just before the pandemic hit. And of course, with the pandemic, a lot of things changed, right? And, and it's taken us about, in all honesty, about the last two to three years to kind of get it back on track and to come back. And I think we've come back at a good space now where uh, we are truly omni-channel, uh, where we service our consumers, not just physically at the store, but also through those stores, through phone delivery, through online, through e-commerce, through an app, and through a WhatsApp chatbot as well. Um, and, and when you look at retail, we also had acquired Nature's Basket, which we turned around within the first year of acquisition. And, and that's been a positive growth story for us, even post-pandemic as well. And we recently launched a new format there as well called uh, Nature's Basket Artisan Pantry, uh, which was our take on moving gourmet grocery to luxury grocery wow and and really kind of moving it to becoming a lot more experience led because those consumers have very evolved tastes are very well traveled very well exposed to global trends in food and are willing to actually purchase a lot of that back home uh, after they're done with their travels. I do remember trying something called a white strawberry at one of those stores of yours yeah. as well, which I think was imported from Japan. So clearly, uh, you know, the tick marks there. But there's also the value side of the business in Spencer's, right? So you're trying to meet both, both. the ends in terms of the mass as well as luxury. Talk to me about the value bit. Where do you see that growing? What kind of store addition you're planning? Which geographies you're going to target there? So for us, we've been very focused that we want to focus on core geographies where we already have a presence and we want to kind of grow within those geographies. So the two geographies that we're focusing on is the north, uh, specifically UP as a state and the east, specifically West Bengal as a state. So for us, these two are going to be the focus areas. And retail is all about economies of scale and that's really the route that we are going. Um, and, and the reason, you know, you, you mentioned about, you know, we are straddling across both the value and, and the luxury is, is when you look at the India uh, demographic, um, the, the large part of the base of that pyramid is what the value segment is for us, right? And, and when, when, you're, when we say value, we actually don't necessarily mean value in terms of a discount format. What we mean in terms of value is um, 
what the mass Indian would like to consume, consume. Right? Right? Yeah. in the cities that we are present. And, and so what's mass for us in those cities is what defines what Spencer's is all about. Interesting. I'll watch out for that. But, you know, I also wanted your word regarding Too Young, because that's what the, you know, a pioneer of sort in that yeah. segment, because you came out with some health foods at the time when, you know, uh, at, in a big way. Earlier, it was very niche and kind of limited to certain cities and micro markets. And you launched with Virat Kohli, etc. And it clearly took off quite well at the start. How's been the pace of growth over the last few years? And when do you see a turnaround and profitability there? Sure. So I think for us, it's been quite an interesting journey with Too Young, uh, right from conceptual the idea of being in this space uh, to actually having products available in the market was a period of about four months and a team of eight people, right? Oh, um, wow. So it was fairly quick. Uh, but, but to be fair, we launched with two products, We Thin, which was our modern take on Kakra and uh, Makhanas, right? And, and while that gave us a good entry into the space, especially since we were going into the space of healthier, better for you snacking, uh, we realized that there were no volumes in both of those products, right? And so today we actually don't sell either of those two products. And, oh, and, really? Wow. Yeah. And the entire portfolio has transitioned. We are still healthier. We are still better for you. Uh, but the portfolio is completely different. So we have uh, Pareto chips, but they are no palm oil. They are less than 35% uh, saturated fat versus the next competition that's available, etc. Right? And we've got a series of unique products like multigrain chips, veggie sticks, etc. And, and I think for us, the growth here has been great. Uh, we've been able to build a fairly sizable brand. And, and just in Tuyam itself, over the next two years, to th two to three years, we're looking to double uh, the revenues there. And, and, and at that point, just this brand should be profitable as well. That's good to hear. I'm just tantalized by the kind of snacks which are there around yeah. me. And I don't feel guilty while trying and eating this out, given the fact it's the healthier version of stuff. But uh, anything else we should watch out for in terms of the product portfolio that might come in here? So if you look at FMCG overall, we move beyond just snacks. So we've got two brands in um, the skincare space as well. So naturally and within beauty. And we've also uh, ventured further into nutraceuticals. One through an acquisition of an Ayurveda brand, Dr. Vedya's, and one through a new launched brand, which was launched as recently as last month, called 360. And the idea here is to bring um, the essence of Ayurveda, homeopathy, and all elements of Ayush and traditional healing, mixing that with modern day science, and therefore creating products that actually solve problems from the root. But do you think you're spreading yourself too thin there? Because there's a lot of competition. It's, it's not a completely new area. Yeah. A lot of new companies which are actually started from India itself have been taking off and building that space. What sets you apart, you think? So I think for us, when we look at FMCG overall, it's, it's a multi-category strategy that we have. And, and you know, the idea is once you build that distribution and pipeline, you can kind of put a lot of things through that same distribution. So your fixed cost is Reduces fixed. that. Yeah, exactly. And, and you're able to do a lot more. Uh, Spread out the efficiency is a lot better. Absolutely. Hmm, that does make sense. Uh, but you know the other parts of the businesses, the so-called traditional ones, but before I come to that, let me actually talk about first those because that was also an acquisition that you made. It took a bit of time to turn around. Yes. And now given the kind of setup that we're seeing in the BPO vertical and the GCC and the global captives coming to India, are you worried about the competition and the kind of growth we should expect there? So for us, most of our clients are based out of the US and the UK. And that's the economies that we're focusing on when it comes to the first source business, right? And, and I think um, what we've been able to do from the time we acquired to now is really get the basics right, kind of, we consolidated a large part of that business as well, exiting areas that we believe were not good in terms of margins or not good in terms of growth. But I think now what we're looking to do is expand that further in those geographies itself. And, and what we're looking at is getting into sub-segments within what we are present in where the margins are higher. So overall at the company level, it becomes margin accretive. And uh, getting into clients which are much larger in size, servicing clients which are larger in size, and clients which can therefore sustain better margins for us, right? Um, and I think what also is one more thing that we're looking to do in the first source business is, is you know, earlier we were very verticalized. Um, and so what happened is if, if I was serving, um, say, client A on a particular issue, I was not servicing them for everything else that I could potentially also service, which I was servicing other clients for. So now we've taken a little bit more of a horizontal approach along with a vertical approach to say that, you know, if you're servicing one client for one issue, can you service them for 20 other things as well? Okay, so basically client mining is what Absolutely. you're going for and clearly that's one 
growth lever which could actually pull you up, uh, pull you kind of higher but the other parts of the business is the more traditional ones and the biggest transformation if i must say in the last few years has been the energy transition uh -huh. right and you have of course been in the thermal part of the business largely in west bengal but you had increased your focus on renewable as well talk to me about where do you see the power generation business of your scaling up sure so so in in the power business we are both in generation and distribution yes. and while traditionally we were predominantly in west bengal mm -hmm. um, i think now with the distribution, distribution franchises expanding. Exp Rajasthan so we kind of expanded other that as well into rajasthan and a few other places as well and we continue to look at that expansion but but if you also look at it we were primarily thermal based right hmm. and i think the strategy over the next 3 years is how do we kind of transition a large part of this base into coming from greener sources of energy um, so we are looking at hybrid both wind and solar and and that's something that we're very excited about but are you looking at a major capacity expansion there as well or is it going to be very slow calibrated basis the requirements so it's going to be basis the requirements obviously it's going to be calibrated but we're looking to set up about 3 gigawatts over the next 5 years so okay 3 gigawatts is a tall target and largely hybrid you're saying all 3 gigawatt yeah. interesting um the other bit which is rpsg ventures you have you know kind of facilitated the growing up and mushrooming and incubation of a lot of these smaller entities as rpsg ventures talk to me about let's say a couple of recent investments you made there and also are you looking at raising fresh capital there would you think yes. that is something so, which is the next step so we actually the first so we are on our third fund in a way now the first fund that we did was completely through in house capital through our own capital because we wanted to be sure that this is a space that we can work on before we actually go out and take more money from outside sure. uh, we did a small opportunities fund to give external people an idea of what our fund is all about and we've just as we speak last week closed on the second fund completely um in terms of the fundraise and this is going to be a 500 crore fund focusing on consumer and consumer tech as as industries um and and so very very excited about this um we've invested in a fair bit of companies in the first fund and the opportunities fund and in this uh, new fund uh, we're going to start with the investments um so honestly at this point i mean there's not much that i can share with a lot of proposals on the table uh, but yeah i'm sure that's keeping you busy with the respective proposals you're getting but what about the you know those legacy business of uh, philip carbon as well which is of course uh, doing quite well for itself but there was this recent kind of diversification that you were planning there as well i think yeah. going deeper into chemicals absolutely so so you know i think traditionally we looked at philip's carbon black as a carbon black manufacturing unit right so therefore it was a very commoditized space um and i think over the last year and a half we changed that thinking to say that that's just one of the many chemicals that we want to be a part of right and and so we wanted to basically expand our presence in chemicals as a sector right and and so today pcbl also acquired today meaning a few months ago sure. but, but now we're getting into the chemical space and we acquired a business called aqua farm based out of pune um which is essentially into phosphonates green chelates etc and and moving into chemicals from from that okay that's interesting but given the fact you're talking about expansion across all of these companies yes. what about the capital and the balance sheet because you've always been averse to debt getting too much debt is something that uh, rpsg group you know stays away from so how are you going to fund all of this so a lot of the companies have strong balance sheets which can fund a lot of this and and of course i mean when you're acquiring there is a little bit of debt financing that you'd look at and other options as well but You know, but not going for a fresh all... round of equity in any of the companies or di dilution or case based. We possibly will case based. Absolutely, it's case to case, and and I think you're right. I think overall as a group we are rather debt averse, and I think that's something that we want to keep that way. Yeah, I'm sure, uh, but that's worked out well for you because that's always created value. But talking about value, do you know the RPSG group was also. always undervalued a bit because i don't know whether it was conservatism at your end or um, you know not being too vocal about the targets but it's changing a lot do you think with, uh, is it a fresh direction that the entire group is taking uh, what's your vision for let's say the group 5 to 10 years from here on i mean 5 to 10 years is a long time um and and but i'm sure you're planning for it already yeah <laughs> but at the at the rate that the world's changing a lot of things will change as well but but i think when i look at the next 5 years um you know definitely it's going to be a completely different a completely new rpsg uh, right in terms of culture and value but even in terms of um how the business is operate even in terms of how we expand uh, the pace of expansion the pace of growth and you're going to see a lot of that okay Uh, fair enough let's do one thing let's take a short breather sure. we'll come back and discuss the rest of the sectors and the segments because clearly you have a loads of them so we'll take a short break and be right back
Welcome back. We're right here at the RPSG house in Kolkata and in conversation with uh, Shashwat Goenka. Shashwat, we're just speaking about the transformation that the entire group is likely to take, right? And one big disruption, apart from, of course, the energy transition, has been this entire way that people are consuming, um, you know, the digital platforms, OTT, music, etc. Sarigama, of course, has been there for over 100 years now, but how is it transforming itself to make sure it's ready for the next leg of growth? Sure. So I think Sarigama for us has been a phenomenal story, right? Um, right from, I think, the creation of Carva, which is what kind of put Sarigama back on the map, um, to kind of now uh, transitioning into a lot of digital, um, transitioning into, or uh, going back into a lot of content production. And, and you'll see over the next, over the course of the next two to three quarters, a lot more growth and diversification that's going to happen in, in the Sarigama business as well. Um, and I think it's a business that we're very excited about. Um, like all of our other businesses. Um, and I think, um, like I told you earlier, I think each of our businesses, you're going to see a huge amount of growth and transformation, and Saregama is no different. Clearly, I can see that energy palpitating and the excitement. But, you know, for Saregama as well, are you going to get into a lot more, uh, you know, niche geographies, regional, uh, you know, music, regional stuff as well? Because that's been the increased flavor. Absolutely. And in fact, um, um, we are already in some of the regions, one of the largest in terms of music, if it's Saregama already, and the idea is to continue to grow the regional portfolio. Because like you said, it's not just the flavor, but that's just how I think India is evolving. Yes. Right? And, and Indians are taking pride in, in their culture and in their regions and their regional heritage. So, so I think that, 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 that's a natural corollary of, of where the business is going to go. Okay, so talking about the regional flavor and the uh, affiliations there, what about the affiliation with sports? How difficult was it to go for Lucknow and not really Kolkata? So, I mean, Kolkata wasn't a franchise on offer. I know. Right? So, so that wasn't really a debate. And I think we're very happy with the Lucknow franchise. Um, it's been great. The people of Lucknow have been great, very supportive and, and, and very supportive of the team um, and us, of course. And, and I think um, everything right from the state administration to the people, to the fans, everything's been a great positive. Um, and I think sports is a business uh, for us, it's not really a passion, it's, it's really a business. Um, and so we, beyond the IPL as well, we have Mohan Bagan Super Giants in the ISL, and we've got a team in the um, South Africa Premier League as well. But you've been Super able Giants. to uh, catch some of the matches in this IPL season? Absolutely. <laughs> I watch each and every one of them, and not just for LSG, but in fact, every game through the season, but have been able to go physically for a few of the games as well. But you know, you're the lucky one who can call watching a match as business as well, right? You can always say, oh, I'm in a meeting and you're actually watching an IPL match but, because it's part of the business. Absolutely, but trust me, I think before we had an IPL team, watching a match was actually fun. Now it's just a lot of stress. stress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can totally imagine that. But since we are in Kolkata, let me try and probably uh, take some insights from you as to what we should be doing in Kolkata. So let me put you on the spot. Your favorite eating joint in Kolkata? My favorite eating joint in Calcutta. Um, I love Asian food, so I'd say Yaucha at Quest is one of my favorite places to go to. Okay, now, so then if I have to ask you your favorite dish, probably a Bengali dish then. Or a sweet dish, if you do have a sweet tooth. I of course have a sweet tooth. Um, I don't think any Bengali exists without a sweet tooth. <laughs> I mean, I'm not Bengali by birth, but yeah, sure. I've been living here, so yes. yeah, absolutely. And, and I think Gurkha Sandesh is something that I absolutely love. I think I've stubbed myself with that Sandesh, I think, over the last couple of days already. Uh, but what about football versus cricket? I think they are very different. Uh, the pace of football is a lot faster. Um, it's... In Calcutta, the passion for football and the passion for Mohan Bagan is extremely, I mean, it's unparalleled, right? So I think it, it's very different. Even the stadium experiences for both are very, very different. Um, I think I've always been more passionate about cricket um, growing up uh, versus football. Um, but I think the sheer passion and energy that the Mohan Bagan fans have is something that is, um, it just kind of, uh, you know, in a way, encapsulates anyone and everyone who's there. So, But since you're talking about passion, what drives Shashwat apart from business? So I think for me, whatever in whatever it is that I do, whether it's work, whether it's outside of work, I think I'm always looking at how can I do something that will have a positive impact in the world. And when I say in the world, I'm not really meaning in the world, but I'm saying to anyone and everyone whose lives I may touch or touch. impact. Yeah. 
Okay, so that's good on that positive note. Actually, Shashwat Peel, thank you so much for making time and speaking with ETNR today. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Such a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.